This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at third-party plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I want to illustrate one of the plugins that we talked about. And we're going to start with AutoGrade, published by Hawaii, which is at hawaii.co.com, H-A-W-A-I-K-I dot C-O. This product supports Final Cut 10, Motion, After Effects, Premiere Pro. It's $49. There's a free trial available. And it is fully automatic image and color correction, plus a new feature that allows color correction based on skin tone. It also requires FX Factory at noiseindustries.com, and you can learn more, as I said, at hawaii.co. Let me show you AutoGrade. We have what could best be described as a problem. Basically, she's green. Now, she's not just a little bit green. She is a serious amount green. Now, in the past, what I would do is I would go to the color correction tools inside Final Cut because they are accurate and they work great. But... They're not necessarily the easiest to learn, and if you've only got a minute and a half and you don't know how the scopes work and you don't know how the color corrector works, you still have a green girl and an unhappy client. We've got to figure out a way to fix that. So here's what we do. We go to the effects window, and we scroll down until we get to Hawaii Key Auto Grade. And I'm going to grab Auto Grade 1. What 1 means is it's a one mouse click color correction. If I click, hold, and drag this on here, so far, nothing changes because we haven't told it what it has to do. Here's the secret to this effect. If something is supposed to be gray or black or white, it must contain equal amounts of red, green, and blue. If something does not contain equal amounts of red, green, and blue, then it's not gray. Well, look at what she's wearing. She's wearing a white T-shirt and a black vest. The problem is this white should be equal amounts of red, green, and blue. Now this is actually a mid-gray color. This is more of a highlight color. The grayscale value does not affect the color value. Those are two different things. But because she's got something on that's white or the white water bottle, I can color balance this. Here's how. Turn off Enable and click on the white color chip. This opens up the standard Macintosh color picker and grab the magnifying glass and drag it and click it on something that's supposed to be gray highlights or white. Click. And notice that instead of being white, look where it is. It's way green. Okay, that's seriously non-white. So here's how this works. This is so cool. Watch this. You click Enable. Watch the picture in 2, 1, woof. Ta-da! Look at that. One mouse click. This is very similar to what we had inside Final Cut 7 with the ability to use the eyedropper tools to auto-color correct, except I think it yields much more effective results than Final Cut 7 did. If you're not quite sure if you want that much, you can drag this up or down to add or subtract from the setting that's there. If you really need more, you need to saturate it more, you can click the Boost button, and that boosts it. Let's take a look at Scopes. And let's take a look at the waveform monitor. Black level's a little elevated. I would probably have the black level go down just a little bit. But compare what this looks like. Still have elevated black levels, so it's really doing color correction. But look at how this is the before and this is the after. It's not just changing the color. It's also taking a look at the grayscale value and adjusting that as well. Now, there's two other settings inside this filter that I really, really like. First is legalize. Full range means that it takes the picture as it is, from super black to super white and everywhere in between. If you're going to the web, super white and super black values cause zero problems. But if you're going to DVD or cable or broadcast, black levels below zero or white levels over 100% are going to cause massive problems. By changing the setting from full range to legal range, it clamps blacks at zero, clamps whites at 100%, and makes sure that you stay legal for any broadcast cable or DVD output. We can save presets. So let's say that she appears multiple times and my camera was all green and a little bit dark in all of them. I could save this as a preset and reopen it just from this preset menu right here. But to me, this has got a couple problems. The black levels are a little high, the mid-tones, it's a little bit too hot to me. So I click fine tune. 
This allows me to take my shadows and pull them down. Now my black levels are sitting closer to zero. And I can grab my midtones and pull them down. And now I can take some of that a little bit too much brightness, a little bit too much in your face out of it by just pulling the fine tuning down and adjusting saturation and grayscale values. This is where we were. This is where we are now. A significant, significant difference. Let's take a look at the vector scope. This is where we were, way toward yellow-green. This is where we are now, much closer to the skin tone line. Now, we can do more than this. Let's just take Auto-Grade auto 1. Auto-Grade 1 is a single mouse click color corrector. Auto-Grade is a multi-purpose color corrector. Here, I can color correct based globally, click on the white color chip, select the magnifying glass, click something that's supposed to be gray or white, and then turn on auto balance, and it automatically corrects it. Doesn't quite saturate as much as the auto grade one does, and it does a better job of maintaining the midtones than auto grade one. I can do a color correction based on global settings, or based on white, or based on black, or the other thing I can do is I can do it based upon skin tone. This is a new feature. Click the color chip, select the eyedropper, select something that's supposed to be skin toned, click here, and then turn on auto balance, and we've got our shot back. Now this doesn't create as rich a picture as Auto Grade 1 does. You can again go back into fine tune, and then change the settings to pump up the saturation and pump up the midtones just a bit. But look at how many more controls we've got. We've got lots and lots and lots of controls, as opposed to just the four that we had in the one grade. For me, this is worth getting just for auto grade one. It does a wonderful job. It's incredibly fast. One mouse click and you're there, and it does better results than Final Cut 7 ever did. If you're starting to get into the auto grade, it's nice to be able to do the auto grade on white, black, especially skin tone. But to get true results, you're going to have to use the fine tune detail, which is what we've got open here. This is not a bad thing. It's just sort of setting an expectation, at which point being able to read scopes and understand what scopes mean is going to be helpful. And I've got training in that regard. The product is called Hawaii Auto Grade. And it makes the process of color correcting to fix errors really, really simple. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at third-party plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 146. By the way, membership is a great value. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. And thanks.